SOPA was the bill that was intended to curtail online piracy of music and movies, but what it did was basically take a sledgehammer to a problem that needed a scalpel. There's collateral damage. Only a handful of us who said, look, we're not for piracy either, but it makes no sense to destroy a, the architecture of the internet, the domain name system, and so much that makes it free and open in the name of fighting a piracy. And Aaron got that right away. The freedoms guaranteed in our constitution, the freedoms our country had been built on, would be suddenly deleted. New technology, instead of bringing us greater freedom, would have snuffed out fundamental rights we'd always taken for granted. And I realized that day that I couldn't let that happen. I don't think anybody really thought that SOPA could be beaten. I remember him just turning to me and being like, I think we might win this. Aaron was one of the most prominent people in a community of people who help lead organizing around social justice issues at the federal level in this country. It was like Aaron had been like striking a match and it was being blown out, striking another one was being blown out, and finally he'd like managed to catch enough kindling that the, the flame actually caught, and then they turned into this roaring blaze. Wikipedia went black, Reddit went black, Craigslist went black, the phone lines on Capitol Hill flat out melted. Members of Congress started rushing to issue statements, retracting their support for the bill that they were promoting just a couple days ago. And that was when, as hard as it was for me to believe, after all this, we had won. The thing that everyone said was impossible, that some of the biggest companies in the world had written off as kind of a pipe dream, had happened. We did it. We won. This is a historic week in internet politics, maybe American politics. The thing that we heard from people in Washington DC from staffers on Capitol Hill was they received more emails and more phone calls on Super Blackout Day than they'd ever received about anything. I think that was an extremely exciting moment. This was the moment when the internet had grown up. You know, it's easy sometimes to feel like you're powerless. Like when you come out in the streets and you march and you yell and nobody hears you. But I'm here to tell you today, you are powerful. For him, it was more important to be sure that you made a small change than to play a small part in a big change. But SOPA was like playing a major part in a major change. <laughs> and so for him, it was kind of this proof of concept. Like, okay, I, you know, what I wanna do with my life is change the world. And this shows that it's possible, right? That the thing that I wanna do with my life is possible. I think Aaron was trying to make the world work. He was trying to fix it. Uh, so he was a bit ahead of his time. It is shocking to think that the accountability is so lax that they don't even have sort of basic statistics about how big the spying program is. And if the answer is, oh, we're spying on so many people we can't possibly even count them, then that's an awful lot of people. I mean, it'd be one thing if they said, look, you know, we, we know the number of telephones we're spying on, we don't know exactly how many real people that corresponds to, but they just came back and said, we can't give you a number at all. That's pretty, I mean, it's scary is what it is. Well, that's scary. You know, they put incredible pressure on him, took away his, all of the money he had made. They, you know, threatened to take away his physical freedom. Why'd they do it, you know? I mean, well, why, why are they going after whistleblowers, you know? Why are they going after people who tell the, you know, who tell the truth about all sorts of things? I mean, in, from the banks to the, um, you know, to war, to just sort of government transparency. Secrecy serves those who are already in power. And we are living in an era of secrecy that coincides with an era where the government is doing also a lot of things that are probably illegal and unconstitutional. So those two things are not coincidences. It's very clear that this technology has been developed, not for small countries overseas, but right here for use in the United States by the US government. Which the problem with the spying program is it's this sort of long, slow expansion, you know, going back to the Nixon administration, right? Obviously it became big after 9-11 under George W. Bush and Obama has continued to expand it. And the problems have slowly grown worse and worse, but there's never been this moment you can point to and say, okay, we need to galvanize opposition today because today is when it matters. Instead it's mattered for a long time. So he was just doing what he thought was right to produce a world that was better. I guess the one thing that I that I would say to people who are feeling the you know for whom the black dog is visiting is that Aaron's problems didn't get solved when he died. Even now as we try to honor Aaron's legacy, 
it's us, it's not him. The one thing that being alive tells you is that you have the power to make things better. Mm -hmm.